Yeah. He was like, no. I was like, come on, let's get this. You know? <laughs> so it, it, I had something to tell Matt on the phone, and I wanted to tell him, but I couldn't, and I didn't, because I wanted to save the podcast mm-hmm. for right now. Um, you want to capture the moment. Now, Matt, today we're going to talk about, among other things. Of course. Of course. Notre Dame fullback Mario Tanelli. God damn, dude. Now, some of you may have heard of him. Most of you probably haven't. <laughs> <laughs> let's start, dude. Let's, let's get from yeah, the kick start. It off, dude. March 27th, 1916. Mario Tanelli is born in Chicago, Illinois. Both his parents were Italian immigrants. Disgusting. Yeah, it's unfortunate. <laughs> no one knows what happened until he was six years old. <laughs> At well, six, his dad beat everyone in this his is, house. This is an interesting. You're gonna like this for six years. Yeah. You're gonna like what happened here. When Mario turned six, he suffered third degree burns on eighty percent of his body when a trash incinerator toppled on him. Damn. How do you get? Wait. What, I don't know. Do I don't you, know how. how do you push one of those things <laughs> over. How does? Yeah, how did that dad? Uh, uh, also, they might just be referring to like just a, a trash can <laughs> on the street. Yeah. Yeah, his but his dad it, was doing somehow it was on the street. <laughs> somehow it was on fire. Really. Yeah, it fell on him and burned. And just it, third degree burns on eighty percent of his body. And why do you think the fire center. spread so quickly? Do you think it had anything to do with? You think heritage? it was a grease fire? <laughs> you think they tried to throw water on him? Dude, this is fucked up. This is not how I wanted to. Mario Tonelli rules. I know, I know. <laughs> You're gonna feel like a damn fool <laughs> shortly. I'm just, I'm wondering in terms of like spontaneous human combustion. You I'm think you're criti- you think I think Italians might combust a little more. You think you're criticizing <laughs> a Notre Dame fullback? No. Oh, you're gonna be pissed. <laughs> yeah, you gotta throw baking soda. On so it, a yeah. trash incinerator fell fell on, on this young Mario. Dude, His name six- is Mario. He's like whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> <laughs> whoa. He did that when it landed on me. T- turned small and jumped. <laughs> he fell off the screen. He was twelve. So six yeah. years old, a plant came out of a pipe and shot a fireball. Yes, at <laughs> exactly right. Tonelli's immigrant father, Chelly. I think it's Chelly. It's C E L I. I would yeah, imagine that's Chelly. A former quarry laborer in northern Italy ignored a doctor's notion that his son may never walk again. This is what he did to rehab his son. Nice. He fastened four wheels to a door. He took off the wall. <laughs> he took a door <laughs> off, tied four wheels to it, and taught his son how to move around with his arms. I think laying down on a door. On a door. <laughs> so this kid's just scurrying around, dude. <laughs> 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 so he's back in small mode. <laughs> so he was running around. So he was strapped to a door. He got strapped to he a door. Crispy. He's crispy still at this He's point. He's still a little crispy. <laughs> but it worked. The door method from Chelly worked. And uh, by the time he was you know, in high school, by 1935, he was the pride of Chicago's prestigious DePaul Academy. And he was a prep standout in football, basketball, and track. He was a beast in football. And back then, this is it's just why it's... Yeah. So you could just be literally like you could have not walked as a kid and just be the best. You're the best at basketball, <laughs> everything. Uh, <laughs> and this is also he's a fullback, and this is back when they used fullbacks. Mm-hmm. Everybody was Mike Allstott. There were no running backs. They didn't really have a long game back then. Could they? Bomb, uh, how far could they throw back then? Surprisingly, like I watched some clips from the <clears throat> 1930s Notre Dame, and they could they could wing it. Like, also, the stands were packed. Really? You can look at the attendances of these games, 40,000, 60,000. Like the same as today really? in a lot of these stadiums. It was fucking crazy. Yeah, man. The, the Phillies, when the Phillies played in like North Philly, they would be, it was like mobbed. They yeah. built like a brand new stadium that could hold 10,000 people. And then they like won the World Series, I think. And then the next year they were turning away like 30,000 people yeah. every game. And they were like, shit, we need to build Notre Dame would play, a new stadium. Notre Fuck. Dame would play Army at Yankee Stadium a lot. They would play like. And then I think there's like polo ground. I don't know. When did they invent Some of these... the forward pass? Great question, Chris. A lot of people attribute it to Notre Dame, but yeah, I thought Notre <laughs> I think Dame did it for some reason Army. I think it was Notre Dame Army at West Point, and Notre Dame was just like, all right, we're gonna throw it. What? I think that yeah. Eventually, someone was just like, all right, let's throw the ball, and in the game they're like, all right. So someone just tossed it. Look it up, Lemay. I know this. The story that there's I was There's no of, way you know this. I do know this. There's an episode of NPR about it. Oh, really? It was actually, uh, it was, uh, it was in, uh, it was near you. William, not Williamsport. Uh, it was a legend. It was a Native American team. Some guy threw it. Oh, uh, NPR was yeah. like, 
actually the Native Americans invented throwing? <laughs> yeah. Google that because NPR is lying. <laughs> NPR is so goddamn gay, dude. So back in that day, there was so a they were Native saying American what, player? like Carlisle, like the Indian school, yeah. Carlisle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're like Jim Thorpe actually threw the first pass. You think white refs would be like, oh sure? Yeah. I heard. I see. I, the story I heard was that uh, the Big Ten, I think, wouldn't let. We'll Notre- get to that. We'll get to that. <laughs> we'll get to that. That's in there. That's in there. Yeah, that might have been when they invented yeah. tackling in football. They saw the engine, toss it, and like, get him. Spear. <laughs> Someone came from the stands. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, before that, it, it was like. Take the football out of the corner. Before that, you could only, you, everybody only had 10 men on the field, and then some guy from the crowd came out and drilled Jim Thorpe, and they're XFL. like, all right, we get 11 guys. <laughs> yeah, I love that they just invented rules as the game so someone just, just took place. tossed it. Yeah. Some of the yeah the forward pass just happened. Um, anyway, so Mario is a beast in high school. He's getting recruited. Mm. College college coaches from all around. USC was huge back then. Uh, USC came. He took a visit to USC and fell in love with it. He was like, "I'm going to USC." Now here's a little Notre Dame magic for you. All right, the Irish head coach Elmer Layden nice. came in with an Italian priest from Notre Dame because he knew the parents were. Wops and <laughs> sat him down and flew in Italian, talked to him about how Notre Dame was Catholic and all that shit. And the mom, his mother, Lavinia, said, You're going to Notre Dame. It's a Catholic school and you won't be far from home. And that was it, Tonelli says. Damn. Laughing. <laughs> Tonelli was laughing when he said it. And that was it. <laughs> I've listened to interviews with this guy. You really? Yeah. I'm still thinking about him being strapped, like the doctor, dad being like, I'm going to strap him to a door. And the doctor's like, okay, dude. We put him on the, the, the door with the wheels. He learned to use arms. And the doctor was like, sir, I please don't do that. We have a nice door, boy. Here, run. Very good. How, can you get, how big was the house? Can you get around on the door? I don't know. Was it, how small was the door? Yeah. <laughs> also, yeah, not a lot of turning. Yeah. I would imagine these wheels weren't swiveling yeah he just sat he in a room with a door on his back for like four years <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah no wonder they didn't was have like the polyurethane wheels it was probably like a clay wheel it'd jam all the time imagine the uh, <laughs> vacuum imagine wheels. that doctor though when he saw old mario running the ball damn dude at depaul he was probably like jesus christ <laughs> I, I need to fucking change the way i doctor <laughs> told these guys he wouldn't walk all right so tonelli commits to elmer Layden's fighting irish damn now let me tell you a little bit about elmer Layden. All right. A lot of people don't know about him. He was right out. He was after Rockney. He was a few years after Newt Rockney. Everybody knows Newt. Come on. Of course, yeah. We're going inside him, outside him. You he, know. Oh, dude, he was one of the best. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Newt and El- Elmer. Did you look up the forward pass? Yes. It was a uh, Brad. His name's Bradbury Robinson. Bradbury Robinson. What tribe did he belong to? <laughs> uh, St. Louis University. Mm. How about that? Yeah. And what is the, the – it was invented or someone just – what is the – uh, On September invented? 5th, 1906, in a game against Carroll College, Robinson's first attempt at a forward pass fell incomplete and resulted in a turnover <laughs> under the 1906 rules. Oh, incompletions were turnovers back then. That's a, I like that rule. That's a good rule. All right, so That's let me tell you, rule. Elmer Layden, he went – he was the head coach from 1934 to 1940. In that time, he went 47, 13, and 3. Let me tell you why Michigan – is gay. Yeah. This is important to this history podcast. Like Rockney before him, Layden was a goodwill ambassador for Notre Dame. He was able to schedule a home and home series with Michigan after meeting with Fielding Yost, who they all jerk off to. Fielding Yost is their guy. Mm-hmm. Healing a rift between the two schools. The two teams had not met since 1909 when, after eight straight losses to Michigan, the Irish posted their first win. So once Notre Dame beat them once, they were like, we're done. We're not playing anymore. That's how gay Michigan is. They were scheduled to meet again in 1910 after the 1909 win, but Michigan canceled the game and refused to play the Irish again. By the time they met again in 42 and 43, Layden had already left Notre Dame, and Frank Leahy had taken his place. Unlike the easygoing Layden, Leahy was a dickhead, and after the Irish had thrashed Michigan by a score of 35 to 12 in 1943, Wolverine coach and athletic director Fritz Chrysler never scheduled the Irish again. Damn. Every time Notre Dame beat them, they would cancel all the games <laughs> why because they're gay what the fuck and that's why they've won 0.5 <clears throat> national titles since world war ii true a why? lot of people don't know that How half they... a title since 90 since hitler was alive they tied they split the national title in 97 what? how did they how did they justify that to their fan base 
or they're like uh, dirty Catholics. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think it was pretty easy back racist, then to be yeah. like disgusting Catholics. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Layden, who was replaced by Leahy, Elmer Layden, he went on to be the commissioner of the NFL. How Damn. about that? How about that? So when Leahy took took over, Notre Dame won titles in forty three. And then Leahy left Notre Dame to join the Navy in 44 and 45. Awesome. So there's no titles there. 43, 46, 47, and 49. Notre Dame won titles. Back yeah. to old Mario Tonelli. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> <laughs> you like my hardcore history voice? I like that, dude. Uh, so Tonelli, has Tonelli been playing? Tonelli's under. No, oh, no, so no. that was like leading up to Tonelli. I was just, I was just tossing in some little Irish, gotcha. little Irish gotcha. history, bro. So now you're leading up to Tonelli. We're, this is the 1937 USC game. Gotcha. That's where we're at. So it's Notre Dame versus USC. First year? This is Tonelli's probably second or third year. Okay. Um, Game's tied 6-6. Fourth quarter. Fighting Irish tied 6-6 with Southern California. Suddenly Notre Dame fullback Mario Mots Tonelli. That was his nickname, Mots. Nice. Uh, he takes a handoff deep in Irish territory, and the bleachers erupt as number 58 races down the field. After a 70-yard run, the 5'11", 195-pound Tonelli was tackled, but then on the next play, he scored the game-winning touchdown seconds later. Damn. Wow. So he was the same size as me, basically. 5'11", 190? I am. He about- bulked up. <clears throat> he bulked up to like 210. I don't know if you ever got that big. No, I've only ever hit 200. Really? So that's a good visual if you guys a want to see what Tonelli or, looks yeah. like. Yeah, same True. size. Yeah, same <laughs> yeah. yeah, I get that. A lot of NBA players. I'm like, oh, I weigh that much. It's like Dwight. It's like Dwight Howard. <laughs> He's on six eleven. This is great, though. Afterward, these are these are the type of interviews you get out of these guys. Afterwards, in the Notre Dame locker room after the game winning touchdown, Tanelli confessed to a reporter, "I don't remember that run. I don't know just what I was thinking about, except just to run." <laughs> So Thanks. he is Gump. He is Gump. Absolutely. No, yo, for real, he is Gump, dude. Wow. <laughs> Damn, he couldn't walk? Yes. He just runs gump. straight out of the complete, fucking end zone? Complete Gump. Damn. Wait till you hear what else happens. He is a complete Gump. All right. So after a 1939 All-Star game, his senior year, Tonelli. Now, everything I've told you is important to the story. Mm-hmm. Number 58, the USC game, all that. Damn. After the game... Uh, after this All Star game in 1939, Tonelli receives his Notre Dame class ring, and he's gay as fuck for it. Why? He loves this fucking ring. Does dude. he really? It's, come on, dude. It's jewelry. I mean, nobody went to college back it's then. Jewelry. He's Italian. I mean, obviously, he got a ring. Couldn't resist. He gets to wear a ring all the <laughs> sure. time. He's like, oh, these are so nice. They're not shiny on mine. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody will see my shiny rings. <laughs> 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 after that, after his after his senior year at Notre Dame in nineteen thirty nine, he becomes an assistant coach at Providence College. I would imagine Providence, Rhode Island. That can't I I don't know. Yeah, it's gotta be. You never know. Back then there's like Notre Dame in nineteen thirty eight or something, or one of the years they won the title lost to like Great Lakes Navy. <laughs> there's just made up yeah. <laughs> they they had no rules. Uh <laughs> And then in 1940, he joins the Chicago Cardinals of the NFL. So he goes in the NFL in 1940. 1941, now you thought this was a Notre Dame podcast. Now a lot of history buffs are back there saying it's 1940. What the hell is going on in the world at this point? True. Come on now. 1941, he joins the Army, and he was assigned to the 200th Coastal Artillery Regiment in Manila in the Philippines. Does anyone else leave like the NFL now and join the army besides that one guy who unfortunately Tillman? Got, yeah. <laughs> got friendly fire. Yeah, he yeah. got shot. What about Villanueva? Villanueva, yeah, yeah. my classmate at West Point. <laughs> oh, really? You knew that, right? <laughs> yeah, I think you might have <laughs> yeah. told me that. Were he was, same? me and him were recruited in the same class. I was a guard. He was a tackle at Villanueva. Mm-hmm. He joined the Army Rangers and I think served in Afghanistan and now he's like the Pittsburgh Steelers left tackle. Damn. I play NCAA 14 <laughs> <laughs> in my parents' basement. <laughs> And I cry during podcast. I cried. To, I'll tell you. <laughs> Last night I was playing an NCAA. I was playing my dynasty in NCAA mm-hmm. and listening to a Jocko podcast that brought me to tears. <laughs> I, started, I started crying. So you guys are the same. Me and Villanueva have very similar <laughs> levels of like fortitude and strength. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking sick. Yeah, Villanueva was a guy. He wouldn't kneel. Beast. Really? In the middle of it, he came out and fucking whew, people did not like that, dude. 
everybody was talking shit, and then they were like, "What's so great about this guy?" And they're like, "Oh, he was an Army Ranger, served in <laughs> Afghanistan. Now he's in the NFL. Like, all right, he's all right." That'd be sick if they got you to do one of those like Army insurance commercials. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah <no. laughs> um. So in 1941, like I said, he joins the Army. He was assigned to the 200th Coastal. He's assigned to Manila, mm. which is, if you know anything about history, the Philippines in 1941, not a great place to be. <sighs> Tonelli hoped to fulfill his one-year commitment to the Army and then return, to his, return back home to his new wife, Mary, and the Cardinals by the 1942 season. So he, in his mind, he was like, all right, I'm just going back. Yeah. One year, serve, mm-hmm. come back to the NFL. Now, that all changed, Matt. December 8th, 1941, when Tonelli was roused from his bunk near Clark Field by an air raid siren. At 0230 hours, a frantic Trans-Pacific message had crackled over the airwaves. Air raid on Pearl Harbor. This is no drill. Uh, Now, a lot of you are sitting there saying, Shane, December 8th, 1941? You mean December 7th. He was in the Philippines. Yeah. Come on, man. Of course. Come on, of course. Guys, of course. Come I was, on, I was about guys. to jump up your ass. Yeah. <laughs> now, it's uh, the 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 Pearl Harbor shit gets me fired up, yeah. dude. Gets, I like it. I was really? watching documentaries on it. It's like just the way like Churchill reacted and shit. Mm-hmm. He was like, he must have been like, yes. Dude, he was so <laughs> yes. stoked. Really. Also, you know, I know so I know you guys like a little conspiracy that three of the aircraft carriers were not in harbor at Pearl Harbor. Those were the ships you actually needed. Where were they? They just happened to be out that day when we got hit. <laughs> really? Yeah, boy. It's almost like someone now they did know the Japanese were gonna come we're at coming, us. Yeah. Because the Japanese were ticked. Yeah. Because Japanese had they had take they they were expanding like crazy. Mm-hmm. They had take they had gone into China. We talked about the rape of Nanking. Yeah, that was like 1937. They had taken at this point Japan controlled like Korea, all of Korea, Manchuria into China. They took Indochina, I believe is what what isn't that what it, Vietnam is called? It's probably yeah, yeah. Sounds like I don't in, know. Indonesia and all that stuff. So they took how many people did Japan have? I don't know. How do you how, how do you many cover all were that from space? Japan? I Land don't know. of the gods, enough dude. guards. What? Yeah. Land of the gods. Well, the way they did it was brutal. That's how they kept they people in order. Them? Yeah. Yeah. And all these, a lot of these countries were already under, like they, they had taken, Japanese took Korea in, I think like 1905 in the Russo-Japanese war. Yeah. Which also started, mm-hmm. Matt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what? The, oddly enough, the Russo-Japanese war started with a surprise attack on Russia's navy. Really? A little foreshadowing, a little trick that they they like. So the to Chinese, do. they like they like to kind of sneak attack the, the Japanese. Ja- oh, the, the Japanese. Japanese snuck attack the Ruskies with a little. Mm-hmm. Na- they like to start wars by eliminating the other side's navy, which uh, is a sick move. But isn't it just one base? Isn't there like multiple? Or are they just taking a nice uh, big well, chunk? Not in wartime. Like like that was the Asiatic. That was our entire Pacific fleet. Oh, just about. Yeah. So yeah. they fucked us up bad in Pearl Harbor. Damn. Like that was the fact that those three aircraft carriers weren't there really helped yeah the united states was going to win that war regardless i i believe mm-hmm. as a historian <laughs> <laughs> but really you know hastened the victory so why did the kamikaze why don't they don't why don't they just drop bombs um i mean it's kind of a mind fuck i to think be like it, yeah, i think they had production problems like i think they were like running out of yeah the, kamikazes i believe gotcha, gotcha. i don't know how, i don't think they were kamikazes at pearl harbor really i don't think so i think that was like kamikaze later. was I just assumed. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> That's all right. You've come a long way. I remember Pearl Harbor. You thought it was like biplanes. And shit. This is good. And there, there could have been. I mean, the Japanese did a lot of like psychological warfare where mm-hmm. they would just like they had bonsai charges, which would be just everybody run at the other side. They would all die. They never worked. Jeez. Everybody would just kill themselves. And it yeah. was so bad that like. It bothered the guys shooting them. Yeah, like they were like, "This is bad. This is we're in a bad place. This These people up. don't care at all." And that was like the mystique they tried to build up for their own army. Mm-hmm. It was like, "We're fucking nuts, dude. <laughs> Damn. Like we are nuts. <laughs> <laughs> we're all ready to die." I wonder how many personnel they lost doing in bonsai charges, <laughs> just doing stuff. So like I was that. listening to. Uh, Hardcore history that fucking like supernova they, in the east. Mm-hmm. He has a bunch on it, and it's like he was talking about how you can you can look up picture 
aftermath of bonsai charges pictures and it's it's nuts dude it's just oh. hundreds of dudes just laying there that Jesus they all tried Christ. to charge could they have like almost one if they didn't do that like no. is it they had they had no shot and they knew that <laughs> it's like no when shot. they tell you to stop buying like starbucks every morning it's like that's where you're losing your money. <laughs> yeah, yeah. it's because like, no, it's it's i don't have a job <laughs> no it was uh the japanese knew a lot of their like higher ups knew they couldn't fuck with the united states because a lot of them studied in the united states they saw what we had mm-hmm. they saw like the amount of people the amount of land all the farm mm-hmm. like they were like if this war machine gets moving we have no shot yeah. so like a lot of the higher ups were like don't try to fuck with the united states and they they went with it anyway what don't was japan's tojo. whole thing like what why did they team up with the nazis did uh, they team up with the nazis they did team up with yeah. the nazis which actually allowed them to get vietnam from the french in 1940 so when the French left, Japan was like, that's ours. And because they were allied with the Germans, the French had to be like, okay, and uh, sign it over to them. So they, they, they joined with – they were just good allies to have, especially with Russia. With Russia, okay. that way Germany, you know, they were ready for war with Russia, and they wanted to have Russia have two fronts as right. well. So Japan, that worked out for them. Um, you never, I don't really think about that a lot, how they were all in like the Nazis team. Yeah, yeah. You know, you never that was really... a bad team. Yeah, dude, that was a tough. <laughs> it was them, Mussolini, the Italians, dude. Yeah, and then the Italians turned on the Germans. I bet early though, <laughs> classic, <laughs> classic, <laughs> classic, <laughs> classic <laughs> collective backstab. Yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely. Hey, uh, it's not going very well. It's a, we, uh, a with... switch. <laughs> yeah. Those other guys are winning pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Who would have thought this podcast would be more racist to Italians <laughs> than Japanese? Just wait, we'll get there. We'll get there. <laughs> Oh, man. I didn't know they switched like that. Yeah. So they were like, you know what? Towards the end of the war, the Italians. This is messed up, yeah, guys. Like, I think we're doing it bad, dude. We got to switch. <laughs> oh, Maybe we were wrong. That's such a sick move. <laughs> Just sick be move. like, wait a second here. Yeah. Well, they flipped right when like, the war in North Africa ended. Mm-hmm. Or like the, when the Allies started to win in North Africa and started to invade Southern Italy, they were like, hold on. <laughs> We're on your guys' team. Yeah, dude, we got to get these sons of bitches. <laughs> they call it a timeout. They're like, timeout. Yeah. <laughs> timeout. Like, Wait, what's going on? Who the fuck are these German motherfuckers? <laughs> what? We thought we were on your side the whole time. That uh, was awesome. Churchill, when that... I couldn't, I couldn't find it, but I could have sworn he sent like a cigar to the king. I could be wrong. But he was fucking stoked when the U.S. As soon as the U.S. got bombed, Churchill was like, yes, dude, yeah, we won. Good. In fact, that night, in his own words, written in a history of World War II, Churchill said that night he went to bed and slept the sleep of the saved. Pretty yeah, tight. Everything good. Churchill says rules. Yeah, he, he does talk. Fucking awesome. Yeah. Slept the sleep of the slave. Saved. Whoa. Saved. Whoa. 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 <laughs> I'm part of me, man. Sorry. I apologize. Uh, he, he, brought slaves. he just came down from New England. I think they still. <laughs> That's a much different sleep, I would imagine. <laughs> of the <All> saved? Right. <laughs> and the saved versus the slaved. <laughs> So, yeah, that's a rough sleep. <laughs> One letter changes everything. <laughs> yeah. So the Japanese at this point, I mean, right when Pearl Harbor happened, they expanded everywhere. But like I said, they were already in China. They were already there in China. <laughs> they had Korea. They had Manchuria. They, they were expanding quite a bit. Uh, also interesting, the Japanese were very interested in biological weapons, and they were mostly trying them out on China including they dropped ceramic bombs filled with bubonic plague. Oh, They wow. tested typhus and other diseases on approximately a thousand different Chinese villages. Damn. So they were just in there just... Ceramic bombs? I think it was a ceramic <laughs> thing filled with bubonic plague. Did they, they, put just... like, they make like a little imperfection, isn't that like a <laughs> Japanese? Word? Yeah, I think they patch Jeez. the imperfection back up and then they, they like put like gold stuff. <laughs> so our boy is sleeping. Uh, Mario's... Uh, he wakes up. <laughs> Uh, keep in mind also so the Japanese are not great 1937 rape of Nanking we talked about that 350,000 approximately were massacred in that oh that's Uh, a lot right after Pearl Harbor they expanded by attacking British colonies in Burma and Malaya as well as Dutch controlled Sumatra so they attacked Burma and Malaya right away to get the rubber Mm -hmm. that those places had. And then they got Sumatra from the Dutch for the oil. Um, And in Malaya, that's, it was kind of a precursor. That's where like the bridge, 
the cool. River Kwai. Yeah, bridge over the River Kwai. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so they, I mean, it was a bit of a precursor to what happens to old Mario, but the, they did the same thing. They took Malaya, just destroyed all the British prisoners. Mm-hmm. They really didn't take prisoners. The Japanese, like, if you surrendered, you were nothing. Damn. You were lower than life. They hated it. So well, they would just, like, kind of, like, throw you in a pit or something? Yeah, a lot of times. I mean, they, <laughs> they did everything that you can imagine. Damn. It sucked. Uh, and this is this is the thing uh, Carlin was saying that the reason so they would like torture the fuck out of whoever they got mm-hmm. if they captured you they would torture you they'd cut your dick off put it in your mouth scariest shit possible and he said <laughs> one of the reasons they did that was to ensure that their own troops never surrendered because they knew they would get tortured for what they did uh, so it was like top down order you guys got to torture whoever the fuck you get mm-hmm. and just make sure no one's fucking surrendering like, Jesus. make sure this is a war of just the worst shit possible. Fuck, God. Yeah, Japanese, not very good. Yeah, yeah that's pretty mean. Um, so right away, after Pearl Harbor, they also attacked other places mm. on that day. They bombed just about every Allied airstrip in the Pacific. So they knocked out all of the airplanes and all of the Navy in the Pacific. Damn. In, like, a day. Uh, which limited General MacArthur's plan. He wanted to defend the Philippines by defending the beaches. Mm-hmm. So not letting them get on land, kind of like Saving Private Ryan, like yeah, set up shit on the beach. It, yeah. But they couldn't do that because without naval support or air, they, they couldn't be out in the open. They'd just get crushed. They couldn't do anything yeah, about yeah. planes and shit. Um, so instead, they'd be forced to kind of slowly retreat within the Philippines once the Japanese got there and tried to you know, make it as hard as possible, which was the WPO3 plan. Just, just, yeah. just for those people out there. <laughs> yeah. What does that stand, does that stand I for? I forget. I, I, forget. I just that. heard. I saw that on Wikipedia yeah. too. Yeah. Right? Quick research. That's gotta suck, dude. To start off a war with a hard, like your whole naval front just fucked up. Yeah, and you're on an island. Uh, so man. that's that's another thing. Like in like with island hopping, which is what the U.S. would do towards. They figured out island hopping. That's kind of what it's called, where you just pick which island you want to attack. So the Japanese, towards the end of the war, they knew they were losing, and they would try to set up, like, massive defensive fortresses on these islands. Mm-hmm. And the U.S. was just like, no, we're not going to attack that. <laughs> we'll, just, we'll just wait. You'll run out of food. We, yeah, have, we'll we control the sea and the air. Yeah. You can't get food on the island. So that's mm-hmm. kind of – all these islands result – like, they kind of end up being prison colonies on their own. Like, you're just stuck on this island Damn. with 100,000 other guys and no food. Ugh. Yeah. And the Japanese wouldn't surrender. So they would just starve to death and then kill themselves. <laughs> like, oh. it was fucking wild, Oh, my dude. God. I mean, he was... Listen to Carlin's Supernova of the East. It talks about, like, just the way they fought was just, mm-hmm. like... Like, they, they would use snipers that would just... They were all suicide missions. Like, they weren't, like, our snipers. Mm-hmm. They weren't, like, Chris Kyle's, dude. Of course. They weren't American heroes. They, these were dudes that would just hide and wait with a machine gun. And if people walk by, they would just fucking shoot as many as they could and then die. So MacArthur, also MacArthur, I can't tell if he rules. A lot of people hate on the boy. Really? No, I think pretty sure he ruled. I can't can't tell. I think he rules like a lot of guys. He like fucking ruled, like Churchill ruled. True. And then I think like after the war is over, it's like, dude, you gotta, we gotta, you gotta chill. (laughs) Yeah, that was, that was all the generals like Patton. (laughs) Allegedly, yeah. they killed Patton. <laughs> I don't know. Really? Yeah. All these guys had weird... Because they were all... This is back... You know, it's still the 40s. Yeah. Like you mean, can, you a have general to can technically take over the yeah, I country. Think you, that makes sense to me. I'd kill him, too. I mean, you can't... If a yeah. guy wins World War II, like, yeah. is the guy that... Eisenhower. Loses, yeah. Then he yeah. becomes president. Yeah. True. But he seemed, to, he seemed pretty relaxed. Eisenhower of the... Yeah. Of all those guys. MacArthur, MacArthur was Patton. pretty nuts. MacArthur would carry like a baton. He always had like a corncob pipe type thing. He had that hat. You remember that hat he <laughs> yeah. wore? That's a that's a Filipino hat. That really? was their, the hat they gave the leader of their military. So he wore it because he was in charge of the Filipino forces. We owned the Philippines. That was, yeah. a, that was a U.S. colony. Mm-hmm. And we had just, I believe, I believe they were like independent for like 10 years. We The U.S. gave them their mm-hmm. independence in like 35, I think. I could be wrong. But have they been independent since then? Or that they... they're independent now? Yeah, yeah. Philippines are fucked they up. It. I was watching some. Well, the Philippines are fucked up now, but <clears throat> dude, Philippines rules. Philippines, Filipinos also... rule. 
Dude, awesome. I was watching. All I don't know. I don't know any of them really other than Manny <laughs> yeah, Pacquiao, yeah. but based on this story, Filipinos. Watch the no-go zone on Amazon. They, they do a gang oh, in the really? Philippines. It's fucking sick. What are Filipino people? What do they get up to? I know they have more. Chill. I know they have like more guns than anybody. They got a lot of gas, they, get, they love guns. President just will shoot. The, the shoot to kill. If you sell drugs, <laughs> yeah. shoot to kill. There's bounty hunters <laughs> right. who will come kill you. If they find evidence, you can be murdered. Yeah. So since. Whoa. Yeah. You Philippines. can see where this started. Yeah. They've had a rough go. <laughs> it for a seems, long time, seems dude. like it. <laughs> yeah, and before that they were Spanish. That's why they all have those Spanish yep. names, all that. Philip, I believe. That's why it's the mm. Philippines. Heard that. That's why they all have like Manny, Manny Pacquiao. Yeah, they all have okay, Spanish names. Yeah. And we took the Philippines, I believe, when we went to war with Spain after we blew up the main. You know, the okay. remember the main in Cuba? The ship? Y- yeah, yeah. It was like a fall. We did that. I USS believe. Maine, yeah. Yeah, I think the U.S. blew up the Maine itself. It was like, look what Spain did to us, yeah. those motherfuckers. What year is this? The 1912 or something like that? Uh, the war with Spain was... Look that up, man. I'm not sure. <laughs> That's the one. Was Teddy Roosevelt in that one? Didn't he, like, charge a hill or yes, something? Yes, you're exactly yeah. right. Yeah, He <clears> was know. in that. Yeah. Didn't know yeah, he yeah. fought Spain, but yeah. glad we won. Well, it was like, <laughs> fuck them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, just, we just got a little nutty. Yeah. <laughs> we just wanted to expand. Same thing with what we did with Mexico in the 18... The Spanish-American War, right? Yeah. It was preseason. 1898. All right. Damn it, I was going to say that. You got to stop doubting yourself. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So, December 7th Mm -hmm. was Pearl Harbor. By December 22nd, General Hama... Homa... General fucking Homo, dude. <laughs> Japanese General Masahoru Homo. Also, I'm going to do this like the Irishman. Hung to death in 1945. You ever see the Irishman? Yeah, yeah. Whenever they introduce characters, they show you oh, like, they how they die. It's like pipe bomb to the face. <laughs> General Homo hung to death in 1945. Damn. Um, by, by the Japanese? By the U.S. for his dirty deeds. So everything this dickhead's doing right now, he's going to get hung for in like three years. Damn, I didn't realize we were still hanging people in. What are you hanging people? We hung Saddam. <laughs> we <laughs> yeah, we, no, we didn't do that. Of, oh, we turned a block. We were like, all right, boys. <laughs> I think uh, Hama got your hung. your culture? I think he got hung in, <laughs> wanna, in the Philippines. You want to topple a wall onto that him? That dude got hung in the Philippines? Yeah. They brought him back to the Philippines, and they're like, all right, remember these guys? <laughs> oh, <laughs> they're man. your jury. Uh, oh. So they landed on December 22nd. The Allies actually held out until April 9th. So they held out for months. Mm-hmm. And this was this was a U.S. and Filipino force, mostly Filipino. Yeah. They, we were, and also the Philippines Army was five years old. They just, so like, you ever see footage of like us trying to train like Iraqi soldiers, like yeah. dudes that can't do jumping jacks? Yeah. yeah, <laughs> like yeah. Literally did. So that was the army. The Fili- yeah. Like these are, this is a new army. And the U.S., the soldiers had never fought. Jesus, and they had dude. faulty equipment. All their helmets were from World War. All their shit was from like World War One. Yeah. Um, and then, like I said, there's no navy and air force, it's so like, they're not getting resupplied. It's like militarizing like yeah. Uber drivers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And they're Absolutely. all they're all in like played again equipment. Yeah, it's a hundred thousand Uber drivers on an island, oh, <laughs> and they're going up against the Japanese who have been at war forever. Yeah. They, these are all like hardened psychos mm-hmm. against Uber, Uber drivers. <laughs> and the Uber drivers hold out pretty good. That's awesome. Yeah. They just tell them like boring, sad stories. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I hurt my back. You know, you can only work 20 hours a week. <laughs> yeah. How about that MacArthur, huh? It's like, all right, man. I don't want to talk MacArthur. <laughs> so Mario's uh, on this island. Mario's on the island, dude. Damn, Super dude. Mario's fucking, <laughs> he's having a tough go, dude. This shit sucks. And the, and again the Japanese are the, the, so they retreat to the Bataan Peninsula, mm-hmm. which controls like the Manila Bay, and the, holding that trying to keep the Japanese Navy out of the bay is important. There's there's a small island off that peninsula called Corregidor, which is where MacArthur eventually is. He's like there, and it still sucks. Like you're in mm-hmm. bunkers, just getting bombed all day. Yeah. There's no stopping air. The, there's no one stopping airplanes from bombing you. So it's just whenever they want. Um, but Hama is under pressure to take this island. Like, he has to get it. Because everybody else in Malaya, in Sumatra, all that, easy. Everybody won. Mm-hmm. He's the general that's, like, having a tough time with these soldiers. So he, a lot of his guys were like, just wait. Just wait, like, another month, and they have to quit. 
Like, you don't even have to attack them. They have no food. But he felt pressure <clears throat> to keep attacking. At one point, he passed out. He fainted under pressure. Really? He's like, yo, 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 yo. He fucking passed out under, like, all the stress of the battle. <laughs> really? Yeah. It was a negative experience. Also, this was interesting. Something, I, I saw this in one video about Mario. Uh, something like one or two in every 25 grenades they had worked. Nothing worked. What? The, all, their, all their ammo and shit was garbage. The Japanese? No, the U.S. Oh, really? Japanese were a war machine at this point. We never, we just started. Oof. So they would toss a nade and it had a 50% this chance of going off? Fucking 10%. And just throw it and be like, hope that, you know, Fuck, or it just hits somebody sucks. like, oh, ah. <laughs> <laughs> but again, this is like, this is the worst place ever. This is like intense jungle Asher. fighting. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> this is intense jungle fighting. This is, uh, Bataan has two volcanoes on it in a very small, it's oh. not big. Like this peninsula is like pretty small. Uh. It just blows. There were cool things that happened, including the charge of the 26th Cavalry, which nice. was the final U.S. Cavalry charge. That's horses. Horses. Really? Yeah. Horses. There was a horse charge in this. The U.S. charged? The U.S. So a bunch of the Japanese mm -hmm. were crossing this river into a village where I'm sure they were going to fucking <laughs> cut everyone apart. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then they, they didn't have anything. There was just a, there was a scout. It was the Philippine scout. These horses... And they saw these guys trying to cross the river into this village, and they just charged into this village with fucking revolvers. That's awesome. On horse. Yeah, it was sick. Fuck. Unfortunately, wow. eventually the, the 26th Cavalry ate all their horses. <laughs> so it does, <laughs> does have a pretty sad ending. <laughs> oh, How long uh, after the charge did that happen? I, I don't know. Just I months, don't know. Months later? I'm, they just yeah, went into the woods with I'm horses. sure they went through horses pretty quick. <laughs> I'm sure oh. they went. I don't know. They I munched those horse, horses. How, yeah, how, many, how long does it take to eat a horse? There's a hundred thousand people. Oh, shit. oh, that's yeah, nothing. So yeah, that's like one. People are yeah. just everything they could eat. There was, dude, there's there was stories of this this guy who like when the bombs would go off and they were in their foxholes, animals would hide in the foxholes with them and they would just grab them and munch them. <laughs> and they were monkeys and they were baby monkeys. And the guy said they looked exactly like humans. And even when he was starving, he couldn't eat them because oh, they looked like holy babies. Shit. But yeah, they, like at night there'd be explosions, so the animals would hide with you, and be, dudes would just grab them and be like, <laughs> just oh munching my like, God. It, God. dude, you can't even. I'm telling you, this shit. I don't know. I was listening to this, just like, whoa, dude. Uh, how fucking, does anybody live this? Yeah. Well, how do you come back from that and then have someone be like, yeah, you like filled out this form wrong? I ate like, dude, a I ate, baby monkey. Yeah, yeah, I ate a monkey. I ate a monkey bombs. alive during bombs. <laughs> yeah. oh. I was that hungry. <laughs> oh While bombs God. were going off, I was like, "This is gonna be pretty good." Yeah, let me catch a quick snack. <laughs> um, oh. <laughs> so on April 9th, they had to surrender. They surrendered, uh, and this was, I believe, General Wainwright's call. MacArthur was like, "Don't surrender." Mm -hmm. MacArthur kept telling him, "Like, don't worry." The Na he hated the Navy. There was some. There was a weird rivalry between the army and navy back then. That was like, f it was real. That's when you got to cut that out, dude. Like, oh, I hate the navy. Well, he was like, the navy's being pussies right now. Although in his defense, he was like, stop being pussies. We yeah. need help. But everybody told them, don't try to defend the Philippines. Like mm -hmm. everybody told MacArthur, like you can't defend the Philippines. Yeah. And that was even when we had a navy and air force. They were like, we're never going to be able to get supplies there. It's so close to Japan, we can't like we can't resupply you. Uh, anyway. So yeah, they're and basically like let it let that happen. So yeah, but MacArthur was like, "That's pussy stuff." Right? MacArthur that's was like, like "That's defeatist." Yeah, yeah. Those were his exact words, which is why he wanted. That's what that's what he felt about that WPO three plan or whatever that was. Yeah. Uh, that's defeatist. Although it could have maybe worked long enough. They they might have held out until the Navy could get there. I'm not sure. Yeah. As a historian, I'm not sure. <laughs> I, I, it's up in the air. For Make a little blurb that Make I read was like he was like he was like this is bullshit. It's defeatist. We got to be more aggressive. And the Japanese kind of fucked him up real quick. And he's yeah. like, All right, back to WPO. Oh yeah, <laughs> right away. Um, so yeah, the Japanese just kind of marched him back. Although the Japanese did have to like stop and mm -hmm. like, so they were taking some hits. It wasn't like for. we gave them what for. The oh, Uber yeah. drivers gave them fucking <laughs> what for, dude. <laughs> 
So at this point, Mario is on the southern tip of the peninsula when the surrender is issued. He's at a place called Maravellis. Maravellis. It's the southern point of the yeah. peninsula. Um, so that's the beginning of what is called the Bataan Death March. So all these people surrendered. It's like 60,000 soldiers, 70,000 soldiers, and then a ton of civilians. All these Filipinos mm-hmm. on the island were trying to re- run with the troops. So that also, like, I mean, thousands of civilians. Jesus. So that's also, there's no food. And these people haven't eaten in months already. And now they're being handed over to the Japanese who don't respect prisoners at all. Like, mm-hmm. general, like have disdain for them. Um and didn't give them food or water. And they, they were then forced to march 60 to 70 miles to Fort Donnell. Fort O'Donnell. Now, the march is, like, considered one of the bigger atrocities to ever happen to, to the U.S. And it was, like, 60. it took six days. Um, anywhere from five to 18,000 Filipinos died on the march. Only around 500 to 650 U.S. soldiers died. <laughs> They took it a little easier on us. They <laughs> hated the Uber drivers, dude. Yeah, that's, oh. that's a big beat. Filipinos get, like, the bottom of the barrel in the Asian world. Japanese hated them, dude. Chinese hate are not a big fan of Filipinos. Ja- well, yeah, well. whoever's number one in Asia at the time just fucking trashes everyone. They're like, Filipinos? Filipinos? <laughs> Disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> then they get the Filipinos come over here. We're like, what are you, Chinese? <laughs> the hell are you, anyway? <laughs> hey, you're like Chinese but hotter. What the hell is <laughs> yeah, that? Yeah. Look at hot. <laughs> Um, this is, this, this was wild. So, all right. So this March, it was a real bummer. <laughs> what the hell are you anyway? What the fuck are you? <laughs> I can't like, Why are they getting you... mad? <laughs> I can't believe they're getting mad. I'm just guessing. <laughs> I'm in the ballpark. Uh, I can't close. put my finger on what kind of bullshit you are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, Matt. <laughs> 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 I don't know what the fuck you are, but I don't like it. <laughs> All right. So the Baton Death March. Matt, if you ever didn't want to do something, yeah. it was the Baton Death oh March. Oh, my God. All right. Well, my survival rate would be pretty decent. You ever think fair. about something you don't want to do? <laughs> yes. It's the Baton Death March. Dude. But of the, like, what did I say, 70,000, 60,000 soldiers, 70,000 soldiers that surrendered. Also, this was the largest surrender in U.S. history. Yeah, it's a lot. Since... Harper's Ferry in the Civil War. And it, I think like 12,000 soldiers. I forget. That's but Union 70, soldiers surrendered? Union soldiers surrendered. <clears throat> the old Stonewall. Your boy. Um, wow. So 70,000 people were like, uh, they said uncle, basically. 70,000 said a lot, uncle. That's a lot of people to surrender, dude. It is. Yeah. And that, that was, it's weird to read these histories where they like kind of try to like let Japan off the hook a little somehow. Mm-hmm. Where they're like, oh, they... The reason they treated them so poorly and didn't feed them or give them drinks is because they weren't prepared for that many prisoners. Yeah. Which I think technically they weren't, which just led to massive overcrowding and everything they did. But also they wouldn't let them drink water. Yeah. Like they didn't, they, they emptied everybody's canteens when they started the march. They took everybody's fucking hats and helmets off so that they got fucking sunburned. Damn, they took this everyone's a, flat rims? They took all their fucking <laughs> doughboy flat rims. <laughs> and they called it, it was called sun treatment. They would literally just oh. sit you in the sun. It's they were up. cunts, dude. Yeah. And they... Can Asian people get burned? I would imagine. Yeah, for sure. They yeah. can cop a burn. But How long do you I don't know. These guys seem to handle it. Yeah. I don't know. But yeah, Japan, yeah, you get burnt. Yeah. There, there's like snow there. They, get, <laughs> they can get crushed. You cop the parasol? Yeah. 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 Filipinos? Take it. <laughs> but the well, sun didn't get them. Obviously not. The swords and bullets got them. Okay. And trucks. Oh. They would follow the line of people with, like, trucks and tanks. So if you, like, fell behind, they would just get run over. If you started a straggle, they would kill you. If you asked for water, they would kill you. Damn. I mean, here's here's one that, that – this was interesting. So the – is a thing called the Pontingan River Massacre. Pontingan River Massacre. Hundreds of POWs were executed under, and they were executed by sword and bayonet. And I mean, there was beheadings. They love oh. Japanese love cutting fucking people's heads off with swords. Yeah, it's got to be kind of cool. <laughs> I just got to that, got got to that part cool. of Westworld. Yeah. <laughs> when you in sharpen what? a knife, Westworld, and, like, cut a tomato. <clears throat> yeah, and you're like, wow, it went right through. Yeah, it's also yeah. weird too. The prisoner 
war prisoner culture is weird where it's like, yeah, they were jerks to the guy. Like, you're supposed to, like, you're killing each other. Then you're like, all right, time out. And they're like, well, you here's are. your room, sir. There's rules. Yeah, it's fucking nuts. There's up. rules. And the Japanese were like, nah. Yeah. They're like, they didn't go with any of that. Yeah. Well, it's just, fu- it's just funny to be like, all right, when we're done killing each other, you got to give me room and it's board. It's just to make sure your guys <laughs> get the same treatment. That's yeah, it yeah. That makes sense. That so, makes sense. again, that goes back to why the Japanese did this. Yeah. Which is they never wanted their guys to surrender. Yeah. They wanted to make sure their soldiers believed that if they got captured, they would get this. Uh, I listened to one of, one of the quotes was like, this guy, f- he he was just talking about how he would fight like angry because one time they found one of the members of their squad that had gone missing in the jungle and he was tied over a log and he had been raped. The whole, all the Japanese dudes fucked him and then shoved a bayonet Jesus in his ass. Oh. That's how they killed him. Jesus. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, how do you like, yeah. How did they know he got fucked after that? <clears throat> I don't know. Was I was gaped? thinking the same thing. Was he gaped? <laughs> this is a U.S. serviceman. <laughs> he did a close up with the eyes. Like, I'm sure they gaped, liked. Dude. They, they probably. I'm sure, there was salmon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was probably all over. Ew. Oh. <laughs> so he like, saw. He's like, oh, there's my boy. And he was like, oh, he's come on his. Oh fuck! They fucking raped. Come on. <laughs> oh man. That's the term bukkake. That's where it comes from. It's from... a Japanese war technique. Stop, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I, I almost, you had to. I know, I was, I was smiling. Like, yeah, I was no, smiling no, I, got, I, I got there, too. <laughs> I was like, whoa. Because um, <clears throat> it does feel like after, you know, they probably did it once and we're like, does it look like he was raped, though? Yeah. Why do we make it? I'd we got to so make sure pissed, they know. Dude. You know, if I found either of you guys had gotten raped <laughs> to death, I'd be furious, dude. I would avenge the Well, shit Chris out. wouldn't be raped. You don't think so? He would have made love. <laughs> <laughs> Chris would have made love. He'd be like, oh my God, so many troops are trying to get me. Yeah, we tried. Guys, I am into this and sorry. we're disrespecting sorry, sorry, these sorry, fucking sorry, guys. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I would have tried to woo him. I would have tried to be like, well, you can fuck me when it's. That's you know, disgusting. A you guy died like, like that. <laughs> like, come on. I can't believe, dude, you guys take freedom. You can for fuck granted. me, but you, we got to protect me afterwards. I True. take free. You guys yeah. are taking I'll freedom. I just turn into his annoying girlfriend instantly. Like, oh. Are you really wearing that hat? <laughs> All right, listen. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, listen. Go ahead. All right. So in that river massacre where hundreds of Filipino and U.S. soldiers got mm-hmm. massacred, that was under the order of Masanobu Suji. <laughs> now this is interesting because, like I said, Homo got fucking hung yeah. for what he had done. <laughs> Suji was in that same. He was in the same boat. He was yeah. about to get hung. He escaped. All right. Suji managed to elude capture while facing war crimes by escaping to Thailand by himself. <laughs> Blended <Nice>. in. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> we were like, we can't find this motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> He's disappeared. Yeah, like, <laughs> fuck. He could be any. He took his hat off and just stood next to another guy. We were like, I mean, dude, that was the absolute <laughs> puzzle for a 1940s white dude. He going to Thailand. He's like, God fucking damn it. He's like, there he is. Ah, shit. <laughs> you got to get him before he gets to Thailand. <laughs> yeah. Are you that son of a bitch well, who's doing war crimes? We got to get him before he gets into any group of five dudes. Because <laughs> yeah. he's vanished. Uh, so, this guy vanished. He just walked slowly to Thailand. We couldn't get him. Uh, interestingly, the, now this is a guy who did, this is crazy. And I looked at the documents. I looked at the damn document. You looked at the uh, docs. I saw the docs. I saw the dossier on Suji. Damn. Suji, after this, in 2005, declassified documents from revealed that Suji became a CIA asset during the Cold War. Stop, dude. Bro. What? Yeah. How'd they That's find awesome. him? I don't know. There was rumors that he was in North Vietnam helping the uh, Viet Cong. There was, I don't know. Wild times. That's though. fucking crazy. But then, it, yeah, it was like, wait, mm-hmm. we, he was a spy for us during the Cold mm-hmm. War? I think he was also retarded. Mm-hmm. I think in the notes, they're like, this guy's totally useless. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I figured you'd be interested in a little Suji info. Yeah, that's like pretty that. nice, actually. Following the surrender of Bataan on April 9th, 1942, this is, I believe, this is just uh, the Imperial Japanese Army prisoners were massed in Marivellis, where Maria was, and Bagak Town. Forgive me, forgive me. They were ordered to turn over their possessions. American Lieutenant Kermit Lay recounted how this was done. Actually, I'm going to do this like uh, Carlin. Please do. I've, I've, I've been trying to sleep while listening to Carlin. Yeah. And it's impossible because he fucking screams quotes. Yeah. Have you ever listened? He's like, now you're talking the type of slaughter you couldn't even imagine. 
American Lieutenant Kermit K recounted how this was done. They pulled us off into a rice paddy and began shaking us down. <laughs> yeah, no, he, he yells. He screams yeah, the quotes. He yells. He gets quiet. He changes the pace. Like, He's and like, then, and this is what you can you even imagine what this was like. Kermit K had this to say. They pulled us off down into the. Yeah. It was making me laugh last night doing that. <laughs> anyway, here's the actual quote. They pulled us off down into a rice paddy and began shaking us down. They began shaking us down. <laughs> shaking us down. There were about a hundred of us, so it took time to get to all of us. Everyone had pulled their pockets wrong side out and laid all their things out in front. They were taking jewelry and doing a lot of slapping. They're slapping the boys around. <laughs> Fuck. Uh, I laid out my Grab New ass. Testament. He laid out his Bible, so go ahead. I dare you to take it, boys. After the shakedown, the Japs took an officer and two enlisted men behind a rice shack and shot them. Damn. And shot them. <laughs> the men who had been next to them said that the Japanese, they, they had Japanese souvenirs and money. So anybody that was found with anything Japanese, the Japanese used it as an excuse to execute them for stealing. And they did this the whole, the whole time. Oh, fuck. A soldier approached our boy Mario. Mm -hmm. He's marching. So I was thinking about that guy getting found. Fucking stop. Gave, sorry. <laughs> it's like terrible. Approach, man. It's horrible. I'm saying I'm just Matt. There's certain things you don't joke about. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> just just oh. happening upon it. Yeah. It's just I'm in shock. Yeah. It's and then just being mad the rest of the war. Oh, I'll be like, furious, I'm dude. Fucking kill these dudes. When <laughs> it's I get also older. just like, how do you retaliate? It's like I'm gonna fuck. One. I would fuck oh. him for real. I'd fuck him 100. percent Yeah. Would you? I'd have to. I don't know if I'd so, fuck him. I would. I'd fuck him. I jizz on him at least. <laughs> I would jizz on him. Yeah, I would jizz on him. I would sure. jizz and make him. You would just like, stand next to him that. and jerk off, and then kill him. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. Jerk man. off on him, kill him. You have to. Uh, so Mario's standing. He's in the march. A uh, soldier approaches Mario. He demanded Mario's Notre Dame ring. Oh, Remember that ring dude, that he loved? Yeah, yeah. Super Mario was still wearing it yeah. in the march for some reason. <laughs> it's hilarious. I, I think he forgot. He was probably pretty hungry. Yeah. Wow. The soldier put his bayonet to Mario's neck, and another U a U.S. soldier turned to him and told him it wasn't worth dying for. Because Mario said no. He loved his ring. Jesus. This is Japanese soldier put a bayonet to him and was like, give me the ring. He's like, no. <laughs> you don't have to take out a ring. <laughs> uh, this is pretty crazy, though. Did he get the ring off his hand? He did. Or? Okay. Japanese soldier steals the ring. Steals his Notre Dame class ring, and Mario's Fuck. fucking... Whoa. <laughs> So fucking sad, dude. Oh, man. <laughs> then this happens. This is wild. Mm. A Japanese officer approaches him mm. and says, in perfect English, says, did one of my men take something from you? Which is like, the hell is this guy doing speaking my language? Yeah. <laughs> and Tonelli said, yeah, he took, he took uh, my ring. He took my class ring. And the guy says... I studied, the officer says, I studied in the United States. I went to Southern California. I remember that run. He remembers the game. He remembers Tonelli's what? run in 1937. And he was like, I'm familiar with Notre Dame football. And he handed him the ring back. Whoa. It's fucking wild. Come That's on. pretty crazy. So he got to wear his ring. He kept his ring. Now the officer was like, you get to fucking hide that because everybody's going to try to steal that. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, he respected the he way he it. pounded the ball. He loved that north-south running approach. <laughs> <laughs> wow. But, yeah, he's a Japanese officer. He studied at USC. He's yeah. like, I remember that 1937 run. Yeah. What Crazy. A game. Think yeah. about, like, running into, like, Reggie Bush. True. <laughs> like, if we – all right, let's say we, like, invaded, like, yeah. Jamaica, and you just saw Usain Bolt walking, and you're like, oh, shit. I remember that guy. Yeah, hey, I, would be, I would be like, kill him right away. If he was, he's going to escape. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude, he's on the other side. Dude, Tinelli yeah, didn't. Huge. Tinelli had his strength, dude. He could, Dude, you know how fast he would have trucked through the Baton Death March? Oh, that's God. true. If you saw like just, a, yeah. <laughs> just lower in the shoulder. You ever see all Stott highlight videos? Yeah. <laughs> Where he's like trucking through like 12 dudes? It would have been incredible. See those tiny Japanese try to tackle him? Oh, no way. Nobody could have stopped him, are you? Yeah, if you saw like an emaciated... Usain Bolt, yeah, you'd put the gold medal back on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'd be like, come yeah. on, man, just uh, one of the fastest. Yeah. <laughs> Mario said this about that officer. He said, "I always thought that someday he'd try to look me up. I guess he probably didn't make it." <laughs> <laughs> uh, and he didn't try to look that guy up. He didn't know that guy. No, you fucking. Yeah, he, he didn't. I doubt he knew his name. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I looked up Matsuhaka. Baka Rocky or something. I don't know. Yeah, they got streets over there. Couldn't Google it. Yeah. Um, 
I'll he's, tell you this. He's got his ring. He's Go got on. his ring. Anyway, Mario's got his ring back. Uh, last <laughs> night, this is what I, I called Chris because mm-hmm. this shit was sick, dude. If you get a chance, listen to Jocko's podcast or read the book. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, by Jim Bolich. Jim Bolich, B O L L I C H. Uh, he has a book called The Baton Death March, A Soldier's Story. And Jocko has a whole podcast on it where he basically just reads the guy's – he reads passages I love when book. he does that. Yeah, he just, like, reads Dude, books. it – I was listening to this thing, like, it was crazy. The end of this book fucking ruled – What was it about? So it was about I, a soldier's account of the de- of the Baton yeah, Death Yeah, he March. was with Mario. And I and oddly enough, they were, they were in the same camp initially as well, which was called – uh, Cabana Tuan. Nice. They were both in that camp. Um, got a cabana. Cabana Twan. <laughs> uh, but this book, dude, like the fucking shit they went, like yeah. the March dysentery turns out it's not as funny as we all think it is. What happens? You end up like shitting out blood and mucus for the majority of it. Oh. You know, I always thought it was just diarrhea to death. It's blood I think and mucus. It, I thought it was. It is you diarrhea out blood and mucus. I think I've had a little right, yeah. diarrhea before. Uh, but that's oh, like, had, that's the beginning. I've been wiping too hard and getting di- dysentery. dysentery. <laughs> <laughs> the beginning, you just crap. Yeah. You crap. Yeah. And yeah. then you start when shit gets. And the lining is gone. Yeah. And then you just, yeah. you just crap out everything. You crap out. And so all these guys had dysentery. Oh. All these guys had dysentery. Everybody was crapping out. Everybody. Yeah. And the, for, obviously, there's no showers. There's no water. Jim Bolich. Bolich. I'm not, I'm going to fuck his yeah. name up. Jim. We'll call him Jim. Uh, he fuck it. at one point he's marching. They would do this thing where they saw a well, like where you could get some water, and if you went to the well, you would get shot. But they were all so thirsty that they would all agree, a bunch of us are going to get shot, but we got to try to get this. So they like a group of twelve dudes would run to get water. Five of them would get shot to death. He he was one of the guys. He went for it. Jim did. Got a gulp of water and ran back in line and made it. But like four other guys got shot. Damn. I mean, it was crazy. The whole thing. At one point, he was marching and he saw a canteen on a fence mm-hmm. while they were marching. And he was like, I thought it was a trap, but fuck it. I took it. And he got it. Jim got a canteen that got him through the march. And he, he had to hold it the whole day because he was like, I can't drink it in daylight because if somebody sees me, they'll kill me. Yeah. So he had to, he just marched with like a canteen hidden. Oh, it would kill he me. He was so thirsty. He had a bev. Yeah. Oh. Uh, also, what was interesting about that was he started to get dysentery. Mm-hmm. And right when they got to this camp, uh, Cabana, Tuan, um, there was a tree there that had leaves that cured dysentery. He got lucky that he started to get the symptoms of dysentery like during the march. So he knew he had it. So he started munching these leaves. But uh, within like a few days, the tree was empty. There was no leaves because everybody had dysentery. Damn. Um, everybody died. I'm God. talking like they all died. Damn. Now they split them up, U.S. and Filipino camps. So the Filipinos during the march, like Filipino civilians were getting killed. Mm-hmm. Like they would try to give people food, and they would get executed for that. Like, Fuck. dude, the Japanese were so mean, dude. Yeah, dude. And what's their problem? Did we massacre anybody? Did we? White people? <laughs> <laughs> we don't do that kind of thing. No, we don't do that no. crap. What do you mean we? <laughs> I stand by nothing the United States has done. No? Other than going to the moon. True. <laughs> That's the only one. So I, I feel I like I had something to colonized, do with that. Colonized time. the moon. Um, all right, no. so Mario's at this camp. So is old Jim. Jim had, Jim had like, if you listen to this podcast, it gives you a, a deeper account. I mean, I'm starting to run out of steam here because the rest of this is now. And also, you got to keep in mind, this is the beginning of the war. Oh. This is like the very beginning of the war. These guys got into prison camps, and the prison camps are exactly what you'd think they were. They're, it was like fucking bamboo walls, dirt. Yeah. You just get killed. Four guys tried to escape from Cabana or whatever the fuck it was mm-hmm. called. and Cabana Tuan. Cabana Tuan. Four guys tried to escape. They all got brought back. They got placed in crates at the front of the camp, like small, tiny crates, so that everybody could see what happens if he tried to escape. Uh. Then they marched everybody out, had the four guys dig their own graves, and then got executed into their own graves. Oh. After that, they split up into like a buddy system, a group of ten. So if one of you escaped, everybody died. And anytime somebody escaped, 
everybody else got executed. Kill all your buddies. Yeah. Jesus. They're mean, dude. Oh, that sucks, dude. Yeah. Did people successfully <clears throat> escape from there? Yeah. Uh, and what was cool, especially some of that cavalry unit, mm-hmm. some of them escaped, and they formed a gl- guerrilla resistance in the Philippines for, like, a long time. Fuck. Yeah. Pretty tight. That's pretty rad. Yeah. Uh, also, listen to listen to the hardcore history on this. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Australians versus the Japanese, pretty tight. It's a good battle. They, they're they're uh, tight now. They're allies. Are they boys? I think the allies. I think there's so many Japanese. In, oh, we're all allies with Japan. Yeah, now. yeah. Japan, okay, yeah, yeah. Japan was like anything Australia give us is doing baseball, is give us basketball. That's, yeah, okay. Yeah. I, I was about, Aus- any, if you think of Australia, that's basically Canada. For gotcha. us. Yeah, for sure. Everything we do, they're like hell yeah. Southern yeah. Canada. Yeah. yeah, copycats. They rule though, for just sure. like Canada. Yeah. Canada and Australia both kind of rule. Oh, you, you you don't like Canada? I'm not about. I, I, don't, know. I yeah, think Canada's yeah. cool. I'm saying they're kind of like copycats. Yeah, they just chill, do stuff, and like, what's America up to? Man? Yeah, except both of them fight like hard. Australia, and Canada. Oh, yeah, they're hard. I mean, Australia fighters. would crush Canada. You'd be surprised. I mean, I know there's some tough dudes from Canada. For now, sure. Canada, yeah. Canada was a D Day. Canada fucking balled out because really? they were all English. But sure. I thought they were at like the weak parts. Were they o- I mean, Omaha, I'm, Utah, or were they like? Look, I don't know exactly. The where I know the Canadians did work. Yeah, I think so. But there was there were sections of uh, historically Canada has done. So you're saying good stuff. Y- Aussies yeah. are kind of yellow bellies. No, so. Aussies are hardcore fucking. So there's dudes. no yellow bellies. Neither of them. I'm saying both of those countries are hardcore. Nice, hardcore. What's, what's, what's the? Uh, it's history. I feel like somebody has to be a yellow Gallipoli belly so I can feel whatever. good about myself. France. <laughs> you could say France. Oh, yeah. France is weak. No, they just ran into <laughs> the Germans off. twice. Yeah. That's like, I mean, they ran into Alabama twice. <laughs> <laughs> Al- Germany's Alabama. Germany's Alabama. Yeah, that's got to be funny. In the beginning, it, Italy had to feel like they picked the right horse. They were like, fucking look right, at dude. Look how yeah. sharp Hitler looked. He was up yeah. there screaming and shit. It's like, yo, this is our fucking team. Compare him to fucking Churchill. Yeah. And true. also, Germany had just taken everything they wanted the whole time. Yeah. yeah. And then the second things got rocky, Italy was like, yeah, I don't even love you. <laughs> <laughs> it was a honeymoon phase for a few years. You and did uh, what? Yeah. You're doing a what to the <laughs> Jews? <laughs> We're in the Northeast. <laughs> uh, all right. All right. What the hell? What the heck's going on? All right. So if you listen, this is for the listener. Yeah. If you're going to listen to that Jocko podcast or read that book, don't listen to the rest of this or – what I'm about to say, because fast forward like a minute, because I'm going to tell these characters, these two fucking knuckleheads, <laughs> about uh, about uh, our old boy Jim. So Jim, mm-hmm. and this also happened to Mario, they get put in what's called hell ships. So these, these ships were transporting prisoners off the island back to Japan. Mm-hmm. Like if you were like an able-bodied guy, they would send you back to Japan to work, because they didn't sign the Geneva Conventions. You, they would put prisoners to work in factories and all that shit. Uh, but they put you on these steel. First off, I forgot to include this in the Bataan Death March. There was about a one-hour train ride. They put them all on trains to ship them to this to Camp O'Donnell, and the train it was in box cars mm-hmm. that were made out of metal, just like the ship was. Oh. That it was 110 degrees this day on this march, Whew. and they packed. They you know obviously they underestimated how many prisoners there were going to be. You couldn't so guys died in the box cars and didn't fall. You were that packed. Like, you'd just be standing next to a guy that was like, Bleh. It was full weekend at Bernie's. Everybody <laughs> was weekend, dude. <laughs> yeah. It'd be it was two weekend. Bernie's per one person who's alive. So you'd be between two Bernie's like, oh, fuck. Matt, your <laughs> lack of respect <laughs> for American war heroes is pissing me off. <laughs> All right? I'm sorry. I was painting that visually. <laughs> that was actually the perfect visual. <laughs> but I don't like it. You don't fucking... No, uh, you're right. You're right. It had to be. It had to suck be, being tall back then, because you know you couldn't get sent back to the factory. Why? Because <laughs> you can't fit. You can't fit. What do you mean? <laughs> Too tall. Oh, you're, you're talking about the Japanese, Japanese factory. Yeah, no, yeah. You can't not everything's about... short centric, Chris. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. You say you couldn't. I be you got them. those fucking Tojo <laughs> glasses on right now. <laughs> I'll go kick your ass. So you're telling me if you're too tall, you couldn't make the PlayStations if you got caught? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, dude, we nuked them right into fucking VCRs and PlayStations. We're like, all right, enough cutting people's heads off, dude. Get to Sonic. Make Sega. Go. <laughs> make Mario. Yeah, channel that psycho energy. Japanese into- did make Mario. Yeah. What? Perhaps after 
Mario Tonelli? They might have, actually. I wonder if that's spy Maybe that activity. guy survived. Yeah. That's... Damn, dude. I never dude. even thought of that. Came back to Japan with the greatest tail. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. Mario definitely, against USC, he hit star power. <laughs> 70-yard run. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, they were putting these, like, fucking train cars that were, like. That and there's, sucks. Dude, the hell ships were the shittiest sounding. That was the one that, like, oh. while I was listening to it, I was like, all right, that one. I mean, don't get me wrong. If I had to march 70 miles in six days yeah. under perfect conditions, I'd be like, this sucks. It stinks. <laughs> if I had, like, a tent, I'd be like, I'm never doing this again. Like a camel pack in a tent? <laughs> yeah, dude. But the hell ships, they were just packed in. Packed into the bottom. Oh. Like, you couldn't stand up. Then they were at sea for 64 days. Oh. Because they were, like, dodging allied ships and planes and, like, oh. submarines. They were just... And, and the heat in the cargo hold got to the point where everybody would, like, pass out simultaneously. Oh, fuck. Like, and maybe you'd wake up. Like, just, you were in an oven oh. for 60 days. That's kind of a nice With one bucket. Go, though. One bucket. Per? Per, they would pass around one bucket. Oh. For di- and everybody had diarrhea. Oh. Everybody. Five gallon? I don't know how, I don't know what we're talking about. Five gallon I would imagine small because you would have yeah. to toss it up to the Japanese. Oh, yeah, probably. I think they only had those little like pails back then. Ugh. Yeah. They didn't have like a let's get it and done. They'd, they'd pretend to fiber. mishandle it on its way up. For oh, sure. and dump poop on you. I mean, <laughs> let's be honest. If I was a Japanese soldier and I had the opportunity to dump, dump poop on the enemy, I might do that. <laughs> <laughs> let's be honest. I might tip yeah. the bucket. Yeah, I mean, Oh, no good, dude. The hell ships. Horrible. The hell ships was like, damn. That was. Imagine waking up from a pass out. They like, didn't where? see the sun. Oh, you didn't see the sun. There were no windows. Oh. You didn't see the sun for sixty days. Jesus. And it was hot. It's... That's what sucks, dude. Yeah. And your shoulder to shoulder can't stand up. Dudes couldn't physically. There were so, some parts where the deck was so low, or the the roof was so low that because it was designed for cargo, so there was a, there was a bottom hold at least on one of the hell ships I heard about, that you could kind of stand up or mm-hmm. at least sit up. The other guys were just trapped, like, laying, dude. Oh. You're, like, laying for 60 on days metal. in the dark, in heat. How, I mean, how do you survive is a question. Most didn't. Most did not. Really? Yeah. So what, what was the numbers by the time they got off the ship? Uh, I don't know. I'd have to look that up. But of the, the death camp, I mean, what did I say, like 15, just the march, like six. 15,000 died on right, just so six days. Oh. And then you get to this camp, then you're at a prison camp. I mean, yeah, so they're probably whittling half the, by this point. I knew what this answer was. I think so. Japanese de- camps, prison camps had a 40% death rate. That's how many people died in the camp. Not like we're fucked for the rest of their lives physically from yeah. disease and shit. It's one star. 40% died. To compare that, I think it was 3% in Europe death rate. Damn. In all of Europe? Yeah. Not all. <laughs> in all of your- Prisoner of war camps in <laughs> Western, in the gotcha, West, gotcha. in our theater. I, gotcha. I'm sure the Russian and German prisoner camps were significantly worse. But in the in the Western theater, it was, I think, 3%, which Damn. was like less than COVID. Yeah, we gave the Germans like peanut butter and shit. Yeah, we like, have fun. You guys like this? Yeah. Like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, who, who is making this peanut butter? <laughs> like, oh, Jews? <laughs> who, the Jews? <laughs> Jews and gypsies. <laughs> um. So yeah, hell ships, all this. You, you just, they they get sent to Japan. Uh, I'll will tell you what happens to Mario. Mario survives the war because I I couldn't find too much information on what happened to him during the war or during while he was in POW camps. Um, he kept his class ring throughout the whole war. Nice, saved it. He says it was in a soap dish. Up his I think it was in his ass. Yeah. yeah. I would imagine. I think he put that in that little tunnel. That little <laughs> <laughs> I think he went. Doo, doo, doo. <laughs> I, think it, I think it sunk right in. But he made it through. What was cool was when he got back to the United States, the all right, he went in at about two hundred ten pounds. Mm-hmm. He was ninety eight pounds when he got rescued. Damn. Ninety eight. He Holy got man. he got back to the United States. I forget the quote. It was pretty funny. He was like, from the power of American roast beef and mashed potatoes, he gained weight again. <laughs> and yes. uh, he played one season again with the Cardinals. But the reason they signed him, which is actually pretty sick, also while you were at war in the NFL, that counted towards your pension. Nice. There's this X amount of years you have to play in the NFL to get a pension, mm-hmm. and they counted wartime for that. So when the Cardinals re-signed him, it counted for pension. 
So now he's got pension the rest of his That's pretty his life. sick. Dude. Pretty sick move by the Cardinals. And it was pretty funny. I was watching like an NFL films thing on Tonelli. They gave him a little coupon that was like free for every NFL game. Awesome. So he's like 85 going up to like Chicago Bears, like just some black lady where he's like, I've never seen anything like that in my life. And he's like, do you read this? He's like, it says I go into any game I want. And she's like, you have to go around. <laughs> like, yeah, dude, like, pretty fun to watch. It's got like Marilyn Monroe on it. Yeah, dude. Yeah, you got it. it, it what, what bothered me about it was it was a ticket that was free for every NFL game except the Super Bowl. That's that was a caveat shitty. on the card, which I didn't like. Yeah, Let him shitty. go to the Super Bowl, Let dude. Go to the bowl, dude. Come on. It's also nice that imagine if like he got back and they had one year left. That now they would have been like, uh, sorry, we gotta about cut him. Yeah, sorry, yeah, about for that. sure. We gotta appease the stockholders. Yeah, pretty <laughs> sick sorry, life though. Him. And then Tanelli, I'm sure he's dead now. I didn't even look that up. Damn, that, I mean, he's, dead. he's <laughs> definitely dead. Be. See how? I mean, he is. He's he is dead. Totally fucking. Dead. You'd be surprised. One guy I was looking at. Yeah, of course he's dead. Uh, where did he die? A lot of them go south. Florida. In Chicago in his home. Hell yeah, dude. Wow. Tanelli is king. When did he die? January 7th, 2003. Damn, he dude, saw man. the towers. <laughs> he saw the towers. He saw the towers go down. And he probably listened to Eminem. That's, isn't yeah. that the craziest thing? A guy yes. that was in the Bataan Death March saw the World Trade Centers fall. Yeah. Oh. 2003. He, he saw Gladiator. Yeah. He saw the movie Gladiator. He was probably sitting there like, holy shit. <laughs> uh, that, was, that was like my favorite thing about Jim Bolich. Jim, when he – so he survives the war. Jim survives yeah. the war, obviously. He wrote a fucking book. Uh, one of the first things they did, like the, one of the first nights, they had movie nights in the camp still. In he, was still in, he was still in the prison camp, mm -hmm. but the Allied soldiers were there. And they were like feeding these guys, trying to get them better. They would have movies at night, and he was like, thank God I never saw a fucking movie because if I had known this was going on in the outside world, I would have tried to escape so many times. Like, he had no idea shit was – shit ruled. Really? In yeah. life. So he had been in movies. a prison – he had been – these guys were in prison camps for over a thousand days. What? <laughs> they, they were, were just, in, They were from the start of the war to the end of the beginning war. Beginning of the war to the end of the war. They were in a yeah. fucking Japanese prison camp with a 40% death rate. Oh, and yeah, he didn't. He didn't. All these guys like take their mind. You try to take your mind off home, because otherwise you die. Yeah. Or you want to give up, or you want to escape. So like, then this guy would sit down and watch a movie of like a beautiful lady falling in love with a guy and like dancing, and he was like, "Fuck, <laughs> like fuck, dude, I've been in this fucking prison." Yeah. <laughs> that would suck so fucking bad. Oh. How do you? Yeah. How do you find the will to live? What are you living for? Tanelli claims it was his class ring. Tanelli, I <laughs> so swear to God, so funny. he said he would look at it at night. He would like un shit it out probably and just <laughs> look at it and be like, one a day I'm going to play for the Chicago Cardinals again. How was his stats on his final season? I think he, I yeah, he was I, trash. I think he was trash. I heard he was a bum. Shut up, dude. <laughs> Tanelli would fuck you up. <laughs> <laughs> it was funny if you didn't know who he was. Like, boo. Yeah, like, this guy sucks. Like, yeah, he's been in a prison camp for four fucking years. He gained 100 pounds this year. Completely out of shape. <laughs> <laughs> a beef and mashed potato. Dude, that must have been Did awesome. he have a sweetheart mm. back home? He was married to a wife, his wife, Mary. Oh, man. And Damn. I hope she, I don't Mary know. Mary better honest, bro. Mary, if cheat? Mary wasn't honest, if that guy was in a prison camp and Mary cheated, she deserves execution. No, I think, I think Tanelli. Yeah, of course it's forgiven. And Tenelli forgivable. Would, yeah, Tenelli Tenelli would wouldn't care. It. Tenelli's like, above that. I'm glad you got what you needed. Tenelli's Tenelli above that. Tenelli probably went home and beat the shit out of her, dude. <laughs> yeah, he, he, he probably, this food's cold. <laughs> strapped, her <to> the, <laughs> strapped her to the door. <laughs> How dare you guys accuse Tenelli of this? This war hero NFL running back. You're getting the you door two, tonight, you dude. You two yeah. fucking bums, dude. I come in here with a nice history of podcast, and you guys crap on it. <laughs> you crap. I'm not crap at all. This is great. Uh, <laughs> What the fuck else? Dude, oh, what so happened this in is, the camp? Dude, this, dude, this is what... All right, so I was playing NCAA mm -hmm. last night, listening to two hours of this Jocko podcast. Yeah. The, I cried at the end of this thing. <laughs> or it, I, I didn't cry. I got a little teary. Eye. It was one of those where I was like, oh. <laughs> like, I'm sitting there like, <laughs> playing a video game. And then I, he hit this one line at the end, and I was like... <laughs> <laughs> like the, it's one of those. I I can the way I would explain the crying is you ever like Swallow you ever fuck. something bad happens to you and it doesn't make you cry at all mm -hmm. until you try to tell someone about oh. it and yeah. then as soon as you start talking you're like huh? <laughs> yeah. it was fine but I was like, huh? yeah. <laughs> uh, oh fuck 
I actually got emotional when I told people about what I had heard. Mm. Anyway, so this guy, he goes through hell, dude. I'm talking yeah. this disease called beriberi everybody got, which is like, I guess, a disease you get from malnourishment and only eating rice, oh. which is like your feet and hands swell, and then you just fucking die. That's called wet beriberi. There's also dry beriberi, which is... Uh, <laughs> I know, it sounds like fucking <laughs> Captain Crunch. It sounds, it sounds cereal, great. Yeah. Dry but berry. dry berryberry is you do, you just have severe pain in your hands and feet. And one guy had it so bad that he just had had the doctors just remove all his nerves in his hands and feet. Oh. It would hurt that bad. Like, it just was con- – dude, Jim <laughs> – I can't say his last name, so I'm just going to call him Jim. Jim, at one point, he was sent to Manchuria in, in the north. Mm-hmm. This is fucking Russia. So it was, he went from fucking equator where everything sucked because it was so hot. Then he went to Russia for the winter. So it was just freezing in a prison. Why did he go to the Russia? Yeah. The Japanese sent him there. Oh, they're boys they are Russians? Pr- no, no. It was their, they owned it. Oh, it's present day Russia. Okay, I got you, got you. They, and in this camp, they conducted experiments on the troops. On U.S. Like they conducted like Dr. Mengele level like, Jesus. they were, like, just tying people together. Like, does this work? What the fuck? <laughs> they were just like... <laughs> Did uh, anything come out of that? What's that? Any of that research? Probably. <laughs> I'm sure there was, like, a lot of... I mean, we went to the moon. <laughs> True. Thanks yeah, to the yeah, Nazis. Yeah. I'm sure yeah, some of the research those boys put together. two people together. I think Dr. Mengele's shit sucked. His yeah. was, like, if I stab a twin, does it hurt the other one? <laughs> <laughs> he, like, loved twins. And twins. <laughs> uh, so you got experimented on? He left that out in the book. Jocko surmised it. Jocko was like, that camp is where that took place. <sighs> the whole time he's reading, every time he reads a passage, he goes, <sighs> yeah, I love listening to him read books. He's like, I, you think, he's like, I read stuff like this and I think how fucking pathetic I am. I'm like, all right, take it easy, Jocko. <laughs> you don't have to, it's just such a funny way for an adult male to read a book and be like, I'm so pathetic. <laughs> uh, that's how I read most books. I mean, yeah, that's how I, yeah, yeah. everything I do. Yeah. <laughs> Listen to music. I lost to Vanderbilt. Yeah. No, I lost to Missouri <laughs> last night at home with Tennessee. I was like, I'm pathetic. <laughs> uh, this, is, this was the wildest shit. So Jim survives all this. Mm-hmm. At one point, he goes to the dentist in one of these camps. And the guy just cuts out, like, most of his teeth. What the fuck? Like, he couldn't communicate with them. Why did he go to the dentist? I don't know. He had a fucked up tooth. It hurt uh, the whole time. He was like, driver. somebody help. He had a card in his mail, like, you're a six-month appointment. He's <laughs> yeah, like, he's fuck? Like, oh, man, I got to report to the, this Japanese dentist. Guess what time it was when he went to the dentist? What time? <laughs> 2.30. 2.30? <laughs> so... <laughs> So he's like pulled his fucking teeth out. And he just ripped some of his teeth out. <laughs> this shit sucked, dude. Oh my god! And then also he said he felt like searing pain. It was them cutting the gum. They cut the gum before they could rip the tooth out. Oh. He's getting his wisdom teeth removed. It was nuts. Oh. So towards the end of the war, they start seeing. They noticed that the Japanese guards were making them dig foxholes, and they were like, "Nice. Yeah. That means you fuckers are hiding, you pussies. That's that means so we're coming." Uh they also started noticing U.S. bombers and, like, all that shit. And they God, were sick. Wow. But it turns out their camp was next to a tank factory, which, again, was against the Geneva Convention. You can't put prison camps next to factories mm-hmm. because yeah, when, the other, bomb when we here. come bomb the factory, we're going to hit our own fucking people, yeah, yeah. which is what happened. The U.S. bombed and hit his prison camp and killed... You know, a bunch, and this is at the end of the war. These guys had gone from day one to the, literally the U.S. invasion, and yeah. they get hit with their own bomb. And it's like when you play paintball and you get shot right away, and you're like, God <laughs> damn it, I got to sit yeah, I gotta take minutes. all this equipment off. <laughs> That's why we're not paintballing at your bachelor party. Dude, we have I to. know you. We no, we're not. No, you, it's it's unlimited wipe offs, dude. I'm out. I'm <laughs> out. To get someone to I'm out. Of, I'm not doing the paintball. I know you. How do you wipe it I down? know you, you and just your wipe brothers. It off. What do you mean? You and your brothers are scum, dude. Well, there's, there you guys are the Japanese. Fire. There won't be any friendly fire. You guys, in paintball, you guys are the Japanese Imperial Army. Are you serious? You guys are scum, dude. Well, what? I'll be on a death march. We'll be on our own team. We'll be playing against strangers. We'll be squatted up. Oh, really? I thought, well, then, I yeah, that'd so. be yeah, hilarious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that'd be so, so fucking fun. fun. You have to. Right. The last time I went paintballing, it was like, uh, yeah, it was that kind of thing. You get the handout equipment, and then you play people who are like pros. I'm not doing anything like against Billy weapons. in paintball. 
do you? He is a up? scumbag. You're trained. You're a trained guy. I am a trained killer, yeah. but I'm a U.S. soldier. <laughs> I follow the Geneva Convention. Yeah. I know none of you do. <laughs> I won't get into this dirty war. Listen, <laughs> so Jim and his boys get hit with U.S. bombs. Yeah. This is eventually some Russians. That sucks. Eventually Russians liberate them. Mm-hmm. So the Russians come in and are like, "This was sick." And I called Chris about it. this. Was a nice thing. So while he's leaving this camp, he sees the the Japanese guards, which were cocksuckers, yeah. start to finish. Like at this point, Jim had a fucked up face because a guard just beat the fuck out of him. An interrogation thing, an interrogation thing that was one of the guards hit him. They brought him into a dark, like an interrogation room, and were like, "Was it okay that he hit you?" And he was like, "Uh," and when he hesitated, they hit him again, and they just beat him. For no, like I mean, Fuck. shit like this. Yeah, yeah. And the again, he weighs ninety pounds. Yeah. That's who they're hitting. They're hitting a, you know, when you see Holocaust footage, like yeah. those, that's who you're hitting. <laughs> they're beating them you're up. Beating those dudes oh. up. It's fucked up. <laughs> what the fuck are you looking at me for? <laughs> I know where you're going. Oh, what are you talking I've about? heard you talk about the elderly. How'd you like to hit them? <laughs> <laughs> that would be you, dude. You'd be like, I wonder if I can literally crack this guy's head off. I mean, I could have, but I wouldn't do that, obviously. <laughs> I could yeah. probably literally behead someone with a punch. If they were that emaciated, I could probably... He actually, which is funny, I'm sure this Japanese guard thought that. He noticed the guard started slapping him after the first punch because he was like, I definitely hurt his hand with my face. <laughs> he tried to like punch him and definitely just hit like a cheekbone and was like... Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> he started slapping him. Yeah, he was like, you better listen to me. <laughs> oh, so the, ja- the, the Russians... Probably like, threw like one of these like... The Russians liberated him and... He was like, the last time I saw those guards, the Russians were taking them out. Like, they were, like, walking together. And he was like, I just assumed they were taking them behind a wall to fucking execute them. Oh. Which fucking rules. Yeah, I love, that had to be we nice. talked about this. I'd be so happy. So nice to watch your enemies fall into Russian hands <laughs> oh, instead yeah. of American. And be like, oh, yeah. nice, the yeah. Russians are here. Yeah, oh, I'd be so The Russians happy. showed up and were like, don't worry, we're here to fuck <laughs> Japan up. And it was like, yes. Oh, dude. there's no better person to come just terminate save you than the Russians. Just a bunch of Russians with vodka just like, don't worry, comrades, we're here to fuck, we're going to murder these yeah. motherfuckers. We've come up with some really creative ways to Yeah, here's how we're going to kill them. We're going to yeah. shoot them all in the head. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're not going to hurt them. We're just going to literally, we're going to kill all these dudes at once. Oh. Like, all right, thanks, Russia. Yeah, they're already thinking about, like, the cleanup. It's like, ca- yeah, exactly, just get casually Totally, shot. just to yeah. get casually executed just blows. Just like, somebody like, yeah, you're, you are gone. <laughs> you're, you're out. Yeah, I think that's what they did when they, like, with Nazi officers. I know that. When they found they, they, they did just, some like, torture went down a line and just like they did yeah. do that they they definitely the Russians and Germans definitely got after it yeah. when it comes to not, not nice killings yeah that was very very personal but same with the Russians and the Japanese they had I, been at war they had been at war for a very yeah. long time and neither of those two were willing to not commit war crimes so they're pretty. Both of them pretty much got down with war crimes. I was wondering that if the if the Russian and the Japanese it seems like they might yeah. have a little beef. They had beef from 1905. Remember that? I told you they snuck attack their fucking uh, navy. Exactly. So they they the Russo Japan. They've always been kind of at war, especially over Korea and Manchuria, uh, that area. And now the Chinese are up there saying true. this is ours. Um, so Jim survives all this. Mm-hmm. We're, on, we're still on Jim. Mario's back. He's playing for the Cardinals. Yeah, he's he's dead. Rudy status. Jim. Is finally they're all put on a boat. Him and his boys, they're saved. The Ruskies come, then the Allied, then the U.S. comes. They put them on a ship to send them back home. Turns it, they're in this. I forget where the fuck they were. I forget what town they were in or what city. And there's a, a fucking typhoon's coming. Mm-hmm. So they're like, all right, it's better to be out at sea when this thing hits versus in the harbor. So we're gonna leave tonight. They go out to sea. They hit a fucking mine. This is after the war. The war is done. Jesus. These guys survived the whole war in a prison camp, and then they're on their way home, and they hit an old Japanese mine that's still out there. And so the ship has a hole in it. I think like 12 dudes died Jesus. in the bomb. And then that fucking typhoon comes. So this thing's engine room was flooded in that bomb, so it's just a drift. He said you had to tie yourself to the ship to not fall overboard because they were all on the deck because the ship was flooded. Mm-hmm. And he said the wall, the water, you'd have to look straight up to see the top of the waves that were coming over the ship. Crazy. So there's killer waves. Killer waves. And there was a gaping hole in the ship. Oh. Gaping. 
right. <laughs> anyway, I forget how that resolves, but like, they survived like, that. They, 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 they survived. Uh, at this point, he's balking a little. He's been getting some roast beef. And <laughs> Doctor's some ice orders cream. Are like Doctor's ordered ice cream. Well, that's what they did. The U.S. for some reason kind of wanted to hide how bad the atrocities were against them. Yeah, I don't know why, but they like fed all these soldiers as much as possible, gave them ice cream and cookies and all that shit. Nice. To like fatten them up before they send them back to their parents to be like, you know, you can't send a skeleton back. Yeah. And be like, well, thanks. <laughs> Use <laughs> thanks for up. giving us your son. Oh yeah, that's true. So this is the this is wild. So he survives that, survives that shipwreck, gets the whole way home. Mm-hmm. When he gets home, he before he meets his parents, he wants to spend a night to like eat more, relax, like shower. He goes to a hotel. Then the next day, he goes to a barber shop. Yeah. And he's getting his haircut before he sees his parents. And while he's getting his haircut in his hometown, this barber is like, doesn't know it's him. Mm-hmm. And he's like, oh man, how terrible is this? There's a family in this town whose two of their sons, his two brothers, died in war, and the other one's in a prison camp. Jeez. He didn't, he hadn't even talked or heard to his fa- from his family. He had no idea his brothers even joined the army. Mm-hmm. And he's sitting there getting his haircut, and he hears that his two brothers fucking died. Jesus. And he just, he was like, he had to get up and he called his sister and was like, come pick me up. Oh. He was going to show up, but he was like, I can't move. Yeah. So he gets home and he's like, it's pretty emotional. He says his, his, na- his name, his dad called him was Pat. His dad's like, Pat. And he's like, Paul. It was just one word each. And he went home. But. Damn. This is what got me fired up was since he, when he, he came home. mail them a letter when he got out? Uh, I think the U.S. did. I think the U.S. was like, hey, your son's on his way home. Oh, okay. oh, you know what? He did include that he had corresponded with them, but he just assumed they were kind of ignoring or f- omitting his questions about his brothers. They uh, never responded uh, about his brothers, and uh, he didn't know why, um, which is great because the first thing his mom says to him when he gets back, when he gets home after fucking five years of this, and she's like, I got some bad news for you. <laughs> it's like, Jesus Christ, oh. dude. <laughs> On the ship back, that was the first bed he had been in in four years. Oh. In four years. Oh. At one point, he's so weak in this one camp. They, they gave him blankets in Manchuria because mm-hmm. it was 10 degrees out. They gave him these little shitty wool blankets. He couldn't, when he lift, first off, he couldn't lift the blanket up. He was that weak and emaciated. And then when he put the blanket on him, the weight of it hurt. It hurt his body to use a blanket. Oh. And then he would say, if I took it off, I would freeze to death. So I just hurt all night. And he was like, at that point, I was used to hurting. It was nothing to hurt. Jesus. At one point, he has a death rattle. So at night, like if your buddies were sleeping, you would have a death rattle. So the guy who was about to die while he was sleeping was like, <sighs> like that's how they would like snore. Yeah. And everyone was like, oh, that guy's fucking dead. <laughs> Jim did that. One day he woke up and his 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 bunkmate was like, "You had the dead, you had that death rattle last night, dude." Fuck. He stayed awake for like four days. He was like, "If I go to sleep, I'm fucking dead." What the fuck? He was Jesus like, "It would have been so Christ. easy to just go to sleep and die." Oh yeah. He's like, dude. but I he just kept trying to get home. It was fucking sick. That's awesome. Here's the part that got me. <laughs> Here's the part that made me like. <laughs> so this guy, he works four years. Lonely. Yeah. In a fucking prison camp. Mm-hmm. Gets the whole way home, survives that bombing, all that shit. He said he has a reoccurring dream almost every night where he wakes up, or in the dream, he's on the other side of this vast ocean. And he knows he's been there before and that it's going to take immense work and pain and time to get the whole way back home again. And he's like, and every time I'm like, I feel like dis- like totally disheartened and heartbroken, all that shit. He's like, but every single time in all those dreams, I start walking. It's like, Fuck let's go. Dude. That's fucking awesome. Let's yeah. go. That's fucking awesome. That's it. That's I mean, the fuck. Yeah. He would pump himself up every night. In his every night he'd be going to sleep like, fuck, I have to do this again. Oh. Well, you were saying also that, he takes that, that step forward. Bro. Damn. In the camps, they like everyone would just dream that they were out. Mm. Every dream. He said like, everybody had the same dream that they were always free and getting set free. And then you'd wake up just... And he was like, it killed dudes. Like, it would kill dudes. Like, if you had a dream that you were home or with your wife or your girlfriend, mm-hmm. he was like, dudes that had wives and girlfriends, he's like, they didn't make it because they were so fucking heartbroken. Jesus Christ. Uh, although Mario made it. He had yeah. bae. He just wanted to fucking run the pigskin. Boy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he just wanted to run the pigskin. <laughs> One more time. And uh, Mario, for a gain of two. 
<laughs> Mario stuffed at the line. Big stick. <laughs> Ooh, he got fucking laid out. We let black players in. Watch out, Mario. <laughs> Like, a lot has uh, changed in the league. <laughs> just black dudes just spearing him. Oh! Uh, Jim's mom must be uh, your roommate's girlfriend. Oh, yeah, yeah, true. <laughs> I actually have bad news. It's like, it's like, holy shit, I'm home. I survived the most, incre- the most incredible odds. I survived and made it home. Your brothers are dead. <laughs> Both your brothers are dead. <laughs> yeah. But that got me going, dude. That's a fucking, that fucking that I, me up, I start walking. I was like, yo. That's fucking awesome. That's life, dude. That's exactly. what you got to do. Yeah, just start walking. Take that step. You know what I'm saying? I heard that, bro. Heard that. That pumps me up, man. Well, that's it. How fucking long was that? Hour and a half. I was about All to say right. hour and That was pretty good. That was we awesome. Even, yeah. That was awesome. Thanks, yeah. guys. Yeah. Thanks, guys. That, that was, was a fucking fun. blast. So that was that book I said, The Baton Death March of Soldier's Life. Obviously... Carlin again, Jocko, and then a bunch of World War Two Smithsonian documentaries. Dude, that was awesome. And the documents. The document, dude. I saw, saw the documents. Saw the on documents, Suji. dude. I couldn't believe I saw the documents. Ah, God damn, dude. Declassified CIA documents. An I'm asset. Sure <laughs> did the Japanese help us in Korea? In the Korean War, I. Or did they like absolve their? They military didn't have a military yeah. back then. 1950, 60. They didn't. They were like, yeah, no, we're not doing this. They were not allowed. We were like, you guys don't get guns anymore. You guys are no more guns for a little while. Why don't you focus on VCRs yeah, dude. and fucking lawnmowers and shit for a little while. And we'll think about it because you guys sucked when you had guns. They tried to do that to Germany after World War One. They had no they guns. Like, no more guns. And then Hitler was like, we're getting guns. Honda, uh, Yamaha, yeah. you're yeah, in charge. Why don't you guys get Sony? us some Hondas? Yeah. Oh. Mitsubishi. <laughs> it's always a bummer when you see all – like, it's funny to look at all these woke-ass commercials these days, all these corporations – yeah. Watch any World War II documentary. Look at like Nazi trucks or Mercedes. Mm-hmm. These guys were all getting loaded up in the back of like Mitsubishi trucks to get executed. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, all right, why don't you miss me with that fucking woke commercial? Dude, yeah. Mercedes. T Mobile, dude. It's like, I drove past T Mobile the other day. It's like, we are rising up together. It's yeah, like, it's every commercial. Oh. Dude, how about you guys are like billionaires? Every commercial. Like, yeah, yeah. Like they, have the, they have like, they're like, we're rising up, T Mobile. Disgusting. Everyone's like, making the same ad, which is, yeah. yeah it's like, well, let's uh, save that for the regular episode. Yeah, yeah. Because I got some fire. I got, I got, some I got some gripes, racism dude. I'd like to talk about. <laughs> I just have some gripes. Yeah, it's like um, a billion-dollar company. It's thank like, you for listening to the podcast. It was awesome.